A wise coach once said something simple but profound to me that changed my attitude to training completely. He said that it's usually the running sessions that you least enjoy that you actually need the most if you're going to become a stronger, faster runner. If you take a second to think about that in the context of your own running, you'll probably find that it rings true. For me, and a lot of the runners that I've worked with over the years, those running sessions I least enjoy, or at least find disproportionately hard, are hill workouts in their various different forms. In fact, unless you live in a very hilly or mountainous area where it's almost impossible to avoid hills, I go as far as to say that hill workouts are one of the most underrated and underused types of running session out there. Love them or hate them, hills have the power to completely transform your running. For the world's best distance runners, like Elliot Kipchoge or Jakob Ingebrigtsen, hill workouts are a key part of the training plan. Whether you want to improve your speed and power, develop your stamina and endurance, or build strength in the legs to keep you running stronger for longer, there's a hill workout that will help you do it. Incorporating hills in your training could be as simple as doing some of your easy and long runs on hilly routes, but there are so many various different types of structured hill workout that, depending on what you need to work on, will supercharge your running. Each type of session has different effects and benefits. Here are some of the ways I use hills with my runners. Take 43-year-old half-marathon runner Matt, for example. He's found over recent years that whenever he starts doing speed work on the track with his running club, he ends up injured. Usually, in fact, with lower back pain. So he's come to avoid doing speed workouts altogether and does the majority of his running at one fairly steady and consistent pace. The problem is, in his words, that he's become one paced simply because of the lack of speed work. He feels like he's stuck in one gear. This is one of those situations where the famous quote from Olympic marathoner Frank Shorter jumps to mind. He came out with the adage that hills are speed work in disguise. Running uphill is obviously hard work, but the added benefit is that it forces you to improve your knee drive, develop a stronger push-off from your glutes, hamstrings and calves, all of which improve your stride length when it comes to running on the flat once again. You can work on the same energy systems as doing 400 or 800 meter reps and improve your running form similarly to how running fast on the track does, all without the impact that comes with running fast on the flat. In fact, hard as it feels, running uphill reduces any tendency you may have to overstride, which in turn helps to reduce the initial impact that your body experiences upon foot strike. That reduced impact is one of the main reasons why I got Matt to introduce a weekly long hill reps workout into his training plan. Here's an example of this type of session. Start with a five minute easy running warm up, gradually increasing the effort, and once you feel warm, take a few minutes to do some dynamic drills like calf pumps and leg swings to prepare for the intensity of the workout ahead. Then, the main block of work. On a moderate incline, run uphill for 60 to 90 seconds at the same intensity, based on RPE or heart rate, but not pace, that you'd approach one of 10 400 meter reps. Turn around and jog down to the start point very slowly, as that's your recovery period. When you get to the bottom, turn immediately and go again for your next rep. Build up to doing 8 to 12 of these reps in a workout and finish with a 10 minute easy jogging cooldown. It's fairly obvious, but worth mentioning that your pace is fairly irrelevant during this session. The gradient of the hill will largely dictate how fast you run. The only aspect of pace to take into account is how consistent you are with your reps. Just like running on a track, your individual reps should be paced the same throughout the workout. Rather than going off too hard in the first few reps, then crashing and burning in the last few reps as you pay the price for that early enthusiasm. Just like 400 and 800 meter reps on the track, these long hill repeats will help you to improve your VO2 max, your body's ability to efficiently consume and use oxygen as you run. In addition, the sheer nature of running hard uphill will help you to build strength endurance in your glutes, quads, calves and hip flexors, all key running muscles that we need to strengthen to run faster. I tend to put these running sessions towards the beginning of a training block, as we're focused on building strength whilst improving speed in general, rather than being as race specific with the workouts as is needed towards the last six weeks of, let's say, a 16 week training plan. As the race day gets closer, it becomes more important to work on specific paces, which is much harder to do with sessions like this compared to running on the flat. Then there's Liz 
who made use of a completely different type of hill workout during her prep for San Francisco Marathon, where she ran a 25-minute PB, or PR for my friends in the States. If you're not aware, San Francisco is a notoriously hilly marathon. If you're planning on running it, doing hill workouts in your training is a must. Liz doesn't live in a particularly hilly area, but she did find a two-mile loop which has plenty of uphill and downhill sections, as well as some good flat sections to break them up. The type of loop that lends itself perfectly to a Kenyan Hills workout every Tuesday as her weekly tempo session. Kenyan Hills are a great way to combine the physiological benefits of tempo or threshold effort running with the strength building effect of hill running. The key difference between these and typical tempo workouts you may have done before is that just like long hill reps I described earlier, you have to focus on effort, not pace. The hills themselves will dictate your pace, but you are in charge of how hard you work. As a consistent measure of effort, I find it easiest to focus on heart rate, but you can use a more subjective measure like RPE. After a 5-10 to 10 minute gradual running warm up, set out running on your hilly loop, aiming to keep your heart rate consistently around 85-90% to 90% of your maximum heart rate, or 8 or 9 out of 10 on a scale of effort. On the uphill sections, the flat parts of the loop and the downhill sections, we need to keep you working that hard throughout. I wouldn't suggest jumping straight in and doing a 30 minute Kenyan Hill session. Instead, you might want to break it down and start with sessions like five times five minutes with a two to three minute recovery between bouts of effort. Then over time, you'll progress to doing longer bouts of effort with a lower work to rest ratio. Three times eight minutes with a two to three minutes recovery, for example, or two times 15 minutes with a three or four minute recovery. The simple mantra to keep in mind is to power up the hills, cruise on the flats, and glide down the hills, whilst keeping the effort consistent throughout. The benefits of Kenyan hills are huge. They'll get you strong for running up and down hills in a way that doesn't require you to live in the mountains. All you need is to find a local hill or two and make a loop incorporating them. Not only that, but they'll teach you a ton about pacing on a hilly course. You'll be able to look at hills with confidence on race day, as Liz discovered en route to her marathon success, knowing that the strength was there in her legs to carry her up even the biggest hills without blowing a gasket and sacrificing her race plan. The third type of hill training I want to talk about is short hill sprints, but using them in a specific way that helped Alex develop a stronger kick to finish his 5k races. Less is more with this type of work, and unlike the other hill workouts that I mentioned a moment ago, you need to recover completely between reps with this one. Here's an example of how we use short hill sprints to develop Alex's kick. Every week, at the end of his Wednesday one hour easy run, I'd get Alex to finish at the base of a moderately steep hill. To begin with, I had him running 6 times 10 seconds up the hill at 80% of his maximum sprinting effort. I actually asked him for 8 out of 10 when 10 was flat out. Between each rep, I had him walking down slowly and taking an extra 30 seconds recovery at the bottom to make sure he's fresh for the next rep. With each rep, the focus was on maintaining a tall posture, driving the knee high and creating a powerful arm action. The reps would get longer week by week, from 10 seconds to 15 seconds, then 20, 25, 30, each with full walking recoveries between each rep. Effectively, we were teaching his body to develop an extra gear to use when he needs to find a strong kick, and do so in a pre-fatigued state. There is an argument to say that you could do these after a tempo session, to make the training even more specific, sprinting uphill on really fatigued legs. But I personally think that the injury risk pushes beyond the threshold that I'm comfortable with as a coach. If you found this video helpful, you'll love the one linked on screen right now, where I share some of my favourite workouts that will improve your VO2 max. Make sure you watch that one next, and I'll see you over there.